Good afternoon. Welcome to another session for the second session today of uh, my swims challenge to do this, uh, do a Facebook live session every single day. I'm Chris. If you don't know that by now, uh, you go back and watch all the other videos. I'm the head coach and developer of the My Swim program, which is a guided program to help you transform your swimming. So no matter what level you're starting at, I'm here to help you transform, become better, more efficient, be able to swim longer, maybe learn a new skill, uh, increase your times, or sorry, decrease your times, uh, to be better. So that's why I'm here, but today I want to share some questions that we've had. Uh, today's question was actually about bilateral breathing. And the question was that they noticed that swimmers in the Olympics during these freestyle events were swimming only or breathing only to one side. This is very true. Uh, one thing though, when you are swimming, it is actually a good technique practice to breathe both sides of your stroke. It helps keep your stroke a lot more balanced, all right? Especially if you're a novice to intermediate swimmer, you really want to learn how to have that bilateral breathing, have that balance. Now, in saying that, I'm a firm believer in finding what works for you. If your natural rhythm in swimming is not to have your head every three strokes be going from one side to the other, don't do it. If you use, if you're a little bit more comfortable breathing to one side in particular, train that way. That's going to make it so that you're not using as much energy. You'll be uh, during your freestyle, you'll be able to go longer, get further distance. But there is the risk of more injuries. There is the risk of having an unbalanced stroke. Okay. You'll become a little stronger on one side of your pole. Now there, there are some fallbacks. So if you're learning how to, how to do freestyle efficiently, definitely start off trying to focus on doing bilateral breathing. Find that natural rhythm from one side to the other. Like I said, it'll really help balance out the stroke. So if you're going one, two, three, breathe. One, two, three, breathe. That's going to be a much more balanced, equal rotation stroke than if you're always going just one side, like this. Even notice here, if I, with me doing this position right now, I'm getting a deeper, longer catch here as I move my head out of the way. Okay, so if I'm here, and breathe, that's going to be a little bit shorter with my right arm than my left. I'm going to become a little bit more powerful with that particular side. Now I'd say that though my stroke is net more naturally built for doing one-sided breathing. I don't recommend it for everybody. I do recommend that you find what works best for you. The other consideration of course is that every time we move our heads we have the potential of moving our bodies out of a nice streamlined horizontal body position. So if you have trouble with body position and finding a nice streamline, you know, moving your head in constant motion is not going to help. If you can keep that balance, try to breathe every three, five, seven, or nine strokes, you're going to leave your head in a much more balanced, streamlined position, proper head position that's going to keep the rest of your body in line and you'll be able to get a much longer efficient stroke, okay? The more we turn our head, the more chance of everything kind of falling off kilter and being a little less balanced. This is definitely something to continue to work on, okay? We've talked before about using a snorkel. Now I know this doesn't actually train in terms of bilateral breathing, okay? But it does help get that right body position and learning how to have that balanced stroke, okay? Find that balanced stroke by using a snorkel. My personal favorite is the Michael Phelps uh, snorkel. This one's fantastic. Just sits in the front of my head, right here. 
Now, I'm not being paid to say anything about the snorkel or anything like that. Um, just from training and trying out different ones. Uh, so it's from Acrosphere, in case you don't know. And it just sits right here. It's got a nice low profile that I can keep a nice, good, solid head position. And not have to worry about turning my head. Some drills to kind of work on. Uh, I like to use different drills, um, mostly pull sets, to help work on breathing control and learning what actually works best for your body. So one, one exercise that I do with swimmers regularly is I do a set of uh, a pull set where we're alternating the breathing pattern on every 50. So starting off just doing breathing every three, Second 50, breathe every 5, every 7, every 9. And depending on the level of that particular swimmer, I might start at 5 and then go 7, 9, even 11. But I want to make sure that the technique is there. I want to see a nice balance. I want to see nice airflow when your face is in the water. All those bubbles that they used to make you do when you were a little kid. You know, all those types of things. As soon as I see that start falling apart, we bring it back down. You know, you, you don't want to have sloppy swimming. Anytime you're working on drills, it's not about being fast. It's about being efficient. It's about focusing on those drills. Take your time. You should have any sort of drill set. It should have lots of rest. Lots of, the interval should be high so you get lots of rest and you can take your time and you can focus through. All right. You don't want to sprint any sort of drill. Another drill I do is I do pause drill. So with this pause drill, you'll be swimming on the side of your body like this and practicing, just lift, having your head in a nice, comfortable position. Half of your face out of the water, half of your face in. When you breathe, just slight turn, get that breath right back in, okay? So you're gonna do this on one side. You can do this on either a half lap and then switch to the other side, or you can do it by 25s, okay? Whatever you become more comfortable with. Another option is to actually break it down into a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. So in this case, we've talked about this before. It's going to be a 1, 2, 3. And that way you can focus on that breathing to that one side. Find that comfort level. You can, you'll really tell, you'll really be able to tell when you aren't comfortable breathing to one side. It'll feel a little tighter. You'll feel your whole body sort of shifting into into the breath versus being able to just kind of turn with it in a natural sort of position you know for me personally that's why i breathe to one side is because i am very tight in my neck i've talked about that before um, i carry a lot of tension through my neck muscles which makes me a little less flexible um, on one side of my body than the other you know it's something i'm working on uh, something i'm trying to improve it's something i've always tried to improve on uh, I'm certainly a lot better than I was when I was 13, 14 years old, but it's still something that I do struggle with. So when you're doing your, your breathing, you know, really make sure that it's nice and low, get that turn, have that head in the water, take a quick breath, and right back in. There shouldn't be any moving, right? whether you're breathing to both sides or just to the one, it's here. Breathe, pull through. Now, there are some benefits um, I do want to mention with the breathing to one side, which is why you see a lot of Olympic swimmers do it this way. They can get a little bit more of a natural rhythm and get a little bit more power. So I mentioned that you become a little bit more powerful with one side of your body when you do a one side breathing. So you get that long stroke here, but it allows you to kind of get that extra little bit of catch. You can pull through and get that acceleration. And when you notice in the Olympics, they're almost doing more of a catch-up freestyle approach where they get that extra breath, okay? Um, kind of a follow-up question that I, I saw come in um, on our Instagram feed was, does it matter how often you breathe? Yes, again, this is based around how Often you move your head. If you move your head a lot, then you're going to be moving your body out of alignment. Every time we, we turn our heads, that's affecting 
of body alignment in the water. So try to limit the amount of breaths you take. All right? But again, it does depend on your natural rhythm. You know, and this is why I find a lot of coaches don't let swimmers do is they don't let their swimmers find their natural rhythm. They force them into what we decided are the preset look and feel of a freestyle or a backstroke or a breaststroke. Let the swimmer find your natural, their natural rhythm in the water. That will give them the greatest chance to improve and greatest chance to continue to grow and expand their, their strokes. So that's all we have for today. Um, thanks for joining us both this morning, early on, and later this afternoon here. Uh, this video will be posted now to our Facebook feed, as well as I am going to post this onto our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to either, one of, either our Facebook feed or our YouTube channel, please do. Uh, for further tips, we also have our free newsletter that goes out once a week and we don't scam or spam you with anything. You know, it's all about tips and ways to improve your swimming and make you better in the water. So until tomorrow, have a great rest of your Thursday. Love you guys for checking in and watching this and I will see you guys soon. Have a great one. Bye.